like everything up so it was empty when it was done and again today yeah. poor guy Was this built or purchased? Uh, this was built and it was built, I'm not sure what the actual purpose was, but like 15 years ago there was a, a nightclub. The students for a nightclub, <laughs> like they had this club right here. So, um, and then they went bankrupt. It was a business school, so they managed to go bankrupt. So that says something about the, the quality of the business school. And then we started renting it back in 2012. And hopefully we're gonna have another five years. Bye. I hope. Let's go. Uh, yeah, so down here we have two similar rooms. To the right we have the open gym space. So this one is always supposed to be reserved for open gym. So the the kind of the guys that don't go to the classes or the ones that want to do something before and after, they always have a, a place to go. To the left we have a, another room is pretty similar. There's more upstairs. Yeah, it's, oh, the wow. main, it's the main floor upstairs. Cross Netflix. the podcast. Yeah, yeah, everything. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. We're actually supposed to kind of make a proper floor and uh, paint it so it gets a little bit yeah, more welcoming, but uh, it works for now. Yeah. So, we have, we have the, the athletes that train session one from maybe 8 a.m. to 10 a.m., and then they rest for two hours and then come back or they relax up here. But I wouldn't, wouldn't fancy those <laughs> stairs after yeah. a heavy leg. <laughs> no. So I think it's in the middle of the class. <laughs> they said make so, a postcard and send it to Oslo. Yeah. Because they were so <laughs> like, surprised. Yeah, like two months later, like we had the postcard. I'm not sure if there's anything on the back. Yeah. <laughs> Take a picture of that and send it on a postcard back to Norway. Joel, get that CrossFit Games 2022. That's funny. And like, we didn't even hear it. Oh, like, yeah. we didn't see the live stream. Obviously, yeah. Yeah. You were busy. But, uh, but somebody just told me that, uh, yeah, this one guy said you should make a postcard and send it to Oslo. Like, two <laughs> two months later. I'm not sure if there's a date on it. No. You don't know who sent it? No. This was sent, like, I think it's the 4th of August, 2020. It's actually from Sweden. Yeah, it's from Sweden. So somebody in Sweden must have. No, I don't know who sent it. It was just like this. <laughs> <laughs> so it's, uh, yeah. About 750 paying members. That's so insane. That's, uh, yeah, that's insane. So, and then we have another maybe 50 em employees and with their plus ones. So we have maybe 10 to 15 coaches that are able to make a living out of it. And they also get to give away one membership to so say that we have. Yeah, somewhere between 825 and 850 members in total that train here. Wow. Yeah. But how, many, how many, like what's average uh, class number per day? Like do you do like a class every hour or how does it work? So we have four, let me just do a quick calculation, we have four plus. So we have about 11 classes a day. That's just the regular classes. And then we have company classes. We have mamas and papas classes. We have uh, what's it called? Senior classes for mm -hmm. the ones that are 70 plus. So, uh, yeah, so a lot of daytime activity as well. So, okay. we try to get companies here during the lunch break and try to get the, yeah, the mamas and papas that are not working or the senior citizens that are training twice a week. So, but on average, maybe, yeah, uh, 11 to 13 classes Monday through Friday. And then we do three classes on Saturday, but we do like a, a Saturday mash. So, we have 50 people doing the class. So That's yeah. just like a mayhem. Yeah, like so it's just like heaps uh, of people. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so not super focused on coaching, just <laughs> yeah, you're a DJ and you just manage the group, but they're also 90 minutes. So you have a lot of time to kind of like, yeah, yeah, get the, the get the community vibe going. Um, and how many how many gyms do you say you run? 14. Wow. Yeah. So we are All from here. Yeah. 
So, but we have really good people on site all around. So I'm not going to take credit for the work that they are doing, but I'm kind of like trying to string things together and make sure that it's a, it's a business. And so. what, like, when you're taking over, say I run a gym yeah. 20 miles away and we start working together, yeah. like, what are you giving me or bringing to me and what am I giving you or bringing to you? Like, what's the trade-off? Yeah, so the thing is, like, if you run a successful gym, you're not gonna sell. Yeah. Like, so if things are good, you're able to take out a decent salary and like people are happy, people don't sell. So the thing is like when people approach us is because they are sick and tired. Like they can't make a living out of it. They see that like they need to add money to the account every month. So that's kind of like, that's where we come in. Like when, when the, sh the ship is already sinking. So what we do is kind of, we just buy the entire company. We take over all the leases. If there's any debt, we clear the debts and everything. Uh, if the owners have borrowed money into the company over 10 years, they want to get that money back, so we kind of get that back. And then we also try to see, have a look at all of the agreements, like for internet, for Spotify, for uh, everything, just see, okay, can we kind of like get them onto our subscriptions? Uh, so kind of we need to see where things are, uh, like where things don't work, but we also try to keep what's working. So we don't want to kind of uh, mess with the community. We we'll not necessarily change the logo because there's a lot of culture, um, like with the logo and everything. Mm. So kind of we just see what's not working and try to fix that based on our experience. And then we just let kind of the things that really works, we try to kind of, uh, yeah, build on that. How many teams are competing this weekend? Eight teams, I think at least six should go to the semi-finals and from there maybe I think at least two or three should be able to go to the games everything depends on the workouts of course but uh, yeah. I think three teams should have a fair chance of qualifying to the games do you think any team can do what you did uh, I'm not sure because I think like the level of the athletes are just as good as we were but like kind of the things that uh, worked out well for us was kind of like the team spirit and like we knew each other really well so we spent a lot of time just getting to know each other uh, like who should do those reps who should do those reps who should we should could buy like when it's male female like who should go together how should we split the reps uh, what pace should you use on the rower when the other one is running and stuff like that so that's kind of like where we were really really good and we did a lot of good training with our coaches on that so I think because these we have kind of some of the top teams here. Uh, they have a guy living in Tromsø. They have one girl living in uh, Trondheim. One gu a guy living here in Oslo. And there's also one girl from Switzerland. So kind of like one of the top teams here, they have four people that don't live in Oslo. So they don't get that dynamics. Leon or Treg? Nei, hvis det er Jens, vi ser på Andreas, og så er det Leon som kommer opp i sted. Ja, jeg er bare coaching. World class coaching. Ja. Det sier like du bare kritiserer din kjærlighet. Ja, ja. Men jeg kan kritisere henne direkte. Så hun må gå gjennom coachen. Er du glad med hvordan alt går? Ja. Ja, det er det. Du finner det stress å gjøre disse typer av scenarier? Ja. That's the hardest because you need to be like hard with the reps, but it's also like you want you want everyone to succeed. Yeah. And you don't want it to be your mistake. That costs. No, exactly. Yeah. That's the hardest part when you say no rep, and then they go and watch the video and then screenshot and why was this a no rep? Does anybody, <clears throat> do any of the coaches not want to judge? Like, does anyone recuse themselves or is that no, what happened? Every, yeah, everyone. Um, and you I think guys... it's better that it's on us. The mistake okay, is on yeah. us, and then it's a member. Or something. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. We try to take the responsibility. Yeah. Um, how many teams have you got here? Eight teams. Eight. And how many? Obviously, you want eight to go to France, but realistically, yeah. how many do you think can go? Uh, I think it's really hard. I think uh, I would say we have four teams that, as long as they do what they can, they will qualify, and also no matter what the workouts would have been. Then I think we have four teams that are in the bubble uh, on that the could average, be. Yeah. I'm not sure how hard. Last year it was 40 spots. This year it's 30. Yeah. So I think we're in that bubble between like 25 to 40 with most of the other teams. So I think 
somewhere in between four to seven. That's always hard. Last year we fought maybe three, but we got yeah. all six. And um, do you think the team in America will qualify for semi-finals or Big. not sure? <laughs> uh, I think they have a chance. <laughs> no, they are really good. So. Is it hard? Because obviously all the teams you've had before have been like here or near here. Yeah. Is it difficult working with them when they're so far away? <coughs> yeah, it's if, the hardest part is they are so good that everything crosses it. So programming and feedback via online is that's good because they are so good at adapting to it. I think it's been a little bit harder with the worm and stuff like that because since we do it like once or twice a week and then you give feedback and then it's one more week until they can practice okay. it instead of just being there and let's change this now for the next set and then let's change this and then it's one session to have the clean and you're good instead of having two or three sessions where they get feedback and okay. that thing. But they are really good at it so. Uh, have you, obviously the teams here like even if they don't qualify, they're still here to push the other teams after quarterfinals. Have you got some kind of plan of like how you're going to replicate that with Pete? The fact that they're kind of on their own there. Uh, actually, we, we don't do too much team training together because okay. we think there's a risk of just pushing each other too much. We do maybe once a week the two teams are doing it together, but also because of the gym. We can't have eight. If okay. eight uh, teams are training together, the members kind of uh, yeah. have what we're doing more is the the programming is pretty similar between the teams even the the teams in america so we get immediate feedback is this good enough okay and then of course we do event training for that team we do event training once a week where it's an event they need to put in a strategy and they need to move like they're doing competition and the goal goal is also to have a yacht that is pretty hard with no reps because that's the yeah. Okay. challenge where you get the no rep in teams it's so much harder to know why did I get the no rep was it because of me the team the sync or was it just yeah. and um, you're so you're doing Noah's programming now as well for this too yeah for Noah Noah yeah yeah what's, what's that like taking over because obviously he had like Max for like 10 12 years yeah. are you like starting his programming is he like what why am I doing this or is it like I think Noah is like uh, he's very. He's only been positive all the way. Yeah. Uh, I think for my help, I have still talked a lot about with Max, what yeah. his recommendations is uh, about he knows him. him so well, like, yeah, and yeah. Uh, like it would be stupid to not use his knowledge. Yeah. Uh, so going on, like doing around the same volume that he has done before, doing the, around the same intensity, but then of course also trying to get new ideas in, because that's also. Many are saying that you should never switch programs or never switch a coach. I think you should uh, yeah. switch a coach sometimes in your career just to get some new input. Yeah, interesting. But it's, uh, yeah, he's so, how do you say it? He's very humble in everything. Yeah. I, I feel like you can give him anything and he just smile and say, okay. Yeah, <laughs> I also think he's confident enough to know that no matter what he's doing, he will get better. Yeah, yeah, that's fair. Um, and then Tola as well, obviously you've kind of, inherited like what I would describe as like the perfect team athlete there like he's just yeah he has it. and they are completely different yeah in, in like yeah. both how they answer in training and also how uh, how they want the training I guess yeah. and uh, even just like energy levels as yeah. people like, yeah. they're very different yeah. energies yeah so it's very fun we have like that team is like Noah and Matilda is uh, that they just want to push all yeah. the time and then Lena and Tola like some more smart approach, maybe with like. Yeah. But they have the experience of team too. Like that has yeah. been there and done it. Yeah. Tola has been on multiple different successful exactly. teams too. And I think that's why they can succeed, even though they don't have a coach there every day, yeah. because they have so much experience and yeah. you, they can just move around their responsibilities. Yeah. Um, how was that first workout? Uh, it was. Um, I think it was good. It was really grippy with the, both the dumbbell set and the close by. Uh, but I think it was better than expected. Okay. Yeah. Did you have a time in your head before you started? Yeah, I really wanted to get sub 10. Okay. Uh, but there was some, uh, I don't know what happened with the, some reps on the boys side. I think it was some, uh, some uh, unsync. Okay. So I think maybe that's, uh, oh, yeah. It held yeah. you up. Huh? It slowed you down a bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. just on the last one. And I think it's because we are uh, a new team. We had a uh, injury on the guy who was supposed to be on our team. 
team. So the alternate is in Pradesh, is it? Yeah. Okay. So our uh, before the open, we had a switch. Okay. So the one uh, we had a Swedish guy, uh, Victor. He was injured in his shoulder, and then we got Leon. It was uh, yeah, it was really good. That's good. Uh, but we haven't done so much training together. So the end thing stuff is like it's okay now in the quarterfinals, and I think it would be really good for the the semis and the games. Since I last spoke to you, you like retired, and then you did quite well in the Open. Yeah, well, yeah, the first one was uh, was good. Yeah. But uh, I've had a back injury since January, so managing that that was not good. Okay. <laughs> uh, all the workout was really bad for my back, um, but it was fun to just like see that yeah. the burpees are still there. <laughs> are you tempted to go like in two weeks? No, well, my plan was to kind of do the open, maybe do the quarterfinals. Uh, yeah. You know, I'm a master athlete too, so yeah. just just to see. But with my back, it's just not worth it. Um, and we'll see. Maybe next year. Uh, I don't know. Is it a little bit less exciting because it's not like part of the big show? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. I think so. Especially and, when you've been there, like yeah, when you've been yeah. to games. Yeah. Um, but I, it, it depends how it's like. Uh, how it will be this year, like with the Mr. Master competition. But uh, I mean, I would prefer to go, to prefer to go somewhere like San Diego or somewhere cool. <laughs> I don't know where that is now, but um, uh, we'll see how this year goes. But I'm, it's just I, I train CrossFit, so I'm like, why don't just compete a little bit? And I'm a very goal-oriented person, so I need something to to work towards. Would you ever be happy to do this routine? I was thinking about it this fall. Um, it's just hard to commit to a team with a baby at home. You never know how much you sleep, uh, how much time you have. Uh, so I don't. I just don't think that's fair to the other teammates. Uh, what age is your son? What? What age is your son? He's uh, ten months. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, so still unpredictable uh, sleep. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. Wait. Wow. Okay. This last night I had probably. Six or seven hours. Oh. The night before, it was more like two or three. Yeah, yeah. Are, you, are you? Have you struggled with like say? Obviously, you said you're goal orientated and everything was like geared towards that. And now, say for the last maybe ten plus nine months, say it's been very different. Where you have to like accept limitations and accept like differences in performance and stuff. Is that like something you found easy or something you struggle with? Uh, to be honest, I tried to just reset after I gave birth or after I got pregnant. I was trying to like, okay, I start from the bottom again, yeah. uh, from scratch, and then see, okay, how good can I get? Okay. Uh, but it, I kind of like at one point, I was like, it would be cool to see if Kristen post-pregnancy and birth could beat free Kristen. <laughs> but I mean, I just don't think... I, I don't have the time or the energy to put in the work that I know is required, but I think it's pretty awesome to see how well I can perform even though I sleep for three hours and don't eat well. Uh, that's not my priority, but when I get in here, I can still perform pretty well. Is, is one of your main roles here as like a resource for advice and like that kind of stuff is that like your like do a lot of athletes go to you and say hey what would you do here or that kind of thing yeah so me and uh, Joachim we we work with Krager the two of us so we have like uh, he's doing most of the programming and stuff like that he's coaching the individual athletes I'm I do some mental training uh, and I'm more here for yeah just uh, if they want to ask me advice like what would you do uh, 
would you strategize this workout? And I'm trying to like teach them that uh, you don't need to like do the just do more physical work, but you can gain so much in working on the tactical part, the technical part, the mental part, and that doesn't require more uh, effort physically. So it's kind of easy, but I feel like a lot of athletes neglect that and don't do it because it's actually really hard. When you say tactical, you mean like knowing where to break? And yeah, and strategize, like how can I be as efficient in each movement? How can I put my feet in a thruster so I don't have to get that far down? Or it, it's, uh, it's faster for me to get down? Um, how do I breathe through a movement? Uh, and for me, how will the best way to split the reps be yeah. so I can get uh, done with the workouts as fast as possible? So when you say all that stuff kind of sounds like trial and error and like figuring stuff out, but when you talk about the mental side, is that like, is there exercises for that? Is there like, how do you, how do you train someone in the mental aspect? Yeah, so I think we have to talk uh, like for several days about that. <laughs> but is that like, do you, but, is, is that like, uh, are you talking about like visualization and that kind of thing? Or are you yeah. talking about like, I want you to do a workout where you really hurt and no. like self-talk during it and that kind of thing? Yeah, no, I don't think that's, uh, yes, they, they do tough workouts, but I think it's, it's more about preparing for how do you prepare for that and how do you tackle it like during, if things get tough. Yeah. We know they all can push through if they have to. Uh, it's about like finding your true potential and by that you have to like find a way to get yourself through things that are really tough. Yeah. Um, so I think before, like in the early days of CrossFit, it was all about just getting mental tough by, by killing yourself in the gym every day. But I think it's more about doing the, doing the mental part, like doing the training before, doing the preparations, knowing okay i know this is gonna hurt uh, this is what i'm gonna tell myself when it starts to hurt because if you're prepared for that uh, you know how to tackle it during if you just go through a tough workout and you don't know how to handle it during you won't get any better yeah, yeah. because you will you will push and it will die and the next time you will hate it even more yeah. that's me <laughs> yeah. so but, my, my strategy of calling myself a piece of shit in the middle of the workout is not that's not advice <laughs> I don't think that I will say that, no, that's not good self-talk. <laughs> you guys get kind of antsy now when you're watching the teams do their quarterfinals? Yeah, I'm more excited actually. I just, I'm more jealous because I, I want to have quarterfinals too. Yeah. So just uh, looking forward to, to kick off things. And is your route the same as last year? You go Asia after yeah. this? Yeah, exactly. Okay. So I'm going to South Korea to okay. compete there. Go on your own or do you bring a coach? I bring uh, someone with okay, me. Yeah. Yeah. I was hoping to bring Joachim, uh, but uh, the Europe semi-finals is the same weekend, oh, okay. so he can't join. Uh, but uh, I have uh, someone in the team that can help me out. Yeah, that's good. You will be fine. Yeah, you will be good. And then you're going, hopefully, to Leon. Yeah, his plan was uh, Europe, but I'm a little bit nervous now that it's for workouts and we haven't had a uh, lift yet. And it's yeah. like 11,000 people or something. Yeah. So I kind of feel like quarters just got like harder and semis just got like easier compared to last year when we had 60 spots and yeah yeah so but i should be good enough it's just i can be really unlucky with the workout so we'll see what are you hoping to see in the individual ones like just don't put a max lift without any fitness yeah and just don't give me too many ring muscles and i'll be and i'll be fine so you don't want like the outliers to play a part really no because yeah. when you're 11,000 when you have like so special uh, specialist workouts it's really bad programming with so many people then they should have thought about that before they change the system but if they give like the team workouts here it's fine yeah because here it's like it's crossfit all the way so that's good so, so if these were replicated for individuals you'd be happy yeah like i wouldn't like doing myself that much but it's still it's like round test so that's good yeah okay. i'm just afraid that they don't think about how they program when the system is new so yeah. I'm trying to yeah. tell her that she's in her best shape. Like, yeah, yeah, she's never I, I been am, yeah. this good. Yeah. So it's gonna be okay anyways. Yeah. Um, what's I, like, what's I, led I to that do you think? Hmm? What's led to that feeling do you think? Have you no. changed anything or is it just consistency? 
probably just consistency I think but like the last months have been good like with Dubai and yeah just everything have been good so I'm in like the best shape I've ever been and I'm like hitting PRs in my Olympic lifts like recently so it's really good it's just still some holes that can play a big factor when you are that many people yeah I think that if once I get to Europe semi-final and it's only 40 and it's like then it's good for me because I'm only hurting when it's like too many people competing and too few like uh, not so many workouts yeah I'm, so I would love I would love yeah. between you and someone else yeah basically. I would love like eight workouts in quarters okay, then yeah. I wouldn't stress one second because I know it's like a more complete test yeah. but when it's four it's more like who's going <laughs> so how, um, how would you rate your chances of going to the arc it's gonna be close if, if we're redoing the first one and can do like maybe 10 to 20 reps better I think we have a chance but uh, we need to we need to do that one right and then we have a chance I think we're just like around 30 if we can make that right and I think the other ones are especially the third one with the wall balls it's good for us if we can just maximize our effort there I think we I think we have a chance okay. and when are you gonna redo the first one tomorrow evening I think yeah does it hurt knowing that you have to redo it yeah yeah <laughs> because our initial thought was like we're not doing this again we did our best and then we look look on the video and just like ah oh, we can do this 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 and like okay we, we need to try rest you talk yeah, and of yeah, right, the rest we took and the other scores from here. That's here, right? yeah, that's the good thing. Like we have seven other teams to like uh, see against, and, uh, and yeah. And you know the other athletes, you can say, well, we're not yeah. going to beat them. But yeah, we should yeah, of beat course. Them. We have yeah. some teams that okay, maybe we need to be closer to them. We should be closer to them. Something like that. Yeah, good. yeah. That's a good thing. Like having seven other teams competing here because this year we're a little more in the dark because uh, you send in on Saturday, so you don't know anything until Saturday evening or Sunday. So it's good to have some other teams just to know where you're at. And you think if teams from here hypothetically don't qualify, will those teams still remain intact to help the teams that do qualify? Yes, of course, of course. Yeah. That's the good thing about this environment. Help each other.